Math 31, last example uh, in this section, and it is a beast. We're going to find all the zeros of this polynomial, and it is a huge <laughs> polynomial. It's a six-degree polynomial, so we have potentially six zeros. Um, the only way we wouldn't have six zeros is if we had some multiplicity on one or more of those zeros, but let's see. Now again, if I was doing this from scratch with no calculator, I would take all the factors of 30 and put them into, or divide them by all the factors of one. And those would be my list of possible rational roots. So just to reiterate that, right? Just so we're seeing how the rational root theorem works. The factors of 30 would be what? Plus or minus one, two, three, Oh, four does not go into that. Um, five does. Five, six, 10, 15, 30. All right, Q would be all of the factors of the lead coefficient, which is nice in this case, it's just one. So when I went to make my list of possible rational zeros, right, possible, rational zeros, I would do p's over q's, and the nice thing about this is when q is one, you're just looking at the possible, or the, the factors of p. So my possible zeros are one, two, three, five, six, 10, 15, and 30, so how many is that? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, uh, 16. So I, I've got it narrowed down to 16 numbers that I could try if I was going, again, by scratch, no starting point, no technology. So there's 16 here, that would stink, but at least they're all whole numbers, right? So I, I would start with one, see if one worked. If that didn't, I would go to negative one, or even if it did, I would still try negative one. I've gotta find six of them. So there's a bunch that are gonna work and then there's a bunch that won't work. All right, that's all fine and good. I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna use technology. So let's go to our graphing calculators and see how many zeros we get from our graphing calculator. All right, so give me a moment. I've got to get this function into my y equals. So I'm just gonna clear this out. We've got x to the sixth minus x to the fifth, minus 26x to the fourth, plus 44x cubed, ooh, plus 91x squared, minus 139x plus 30, and I am definitely gonna look for typos. x to the sixth, minus x to the fifth, minus x to the fourth, minus one third. Okay, it looks like that's okay. All right, let's hit zoom six and see what pops up. And I could have up to six x-intercepts. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. That looked like maybe it was all six of them. Wow, so that's a lot to take in. So let me look for ones that look like whole numbers. So one, two, it looks like negative two, three, four, five. I think negative five and negative two seem like pretty good possibilities. I'm not sure what's going on here. That one's pretty darn close to the origin. That looks like x equals one. So this would be one, two, maybe three, something not quite at four. So let me go with the ones I, I, I think for sure. I think negative five, let me try it. Second calc one, let me plug in negative five. Okay, that is a zero. I'm gonna keep that one. I think this was negative two. So second calc one, let's try negative two. That worked. It's hard for me to tell what's going on here. There looks like there's something at the origin. So let me just try the origin. If I plug in zero, I get 30 back out. That wasn't a zero. Okay, I think x equaling one. So let me do second trace. Let's do one. Yeah, that's a zero. Okay, so one, two, I think x equals three is a zero. All right. And then I'm not sure what this number is. It's not quite at four. Even if I were to, let me just make my window a little smaller. Let me go from like, I'll go negative six to six. So there was negative five, and then we should have negative two, and then I should have positive one, and three, and then I wasn't sure what this number is, right? It's something between three and four. Just like this one here is between zero and one. So there are still two more out there that I'm not sure. They're, they're probably, 
Well, I, I would say they're, they're definitely not imaginary because I can see them. And it just means they're not rational. That means there's probably radicals involved because most square roots are not uh, rational numbers. You can't write them as a fraction. So let's go see if I can find these other two. And, and I could find them on my calculator, at least the decimal version, but I'm gonna wanna see the work that supports this. All right, so here we go. I'll just go in the order I have written. Doesn't matter which order you go in, but I'll go in the order I have written. So I'm gonna use synthetic division. We got one, negative one, negative 26, 44, 91, negative 139, and 30. All right, and I should be getting a zero here. So we've got one, negative five, negative six, 30, four, negative 20, 24, um, let me get my calculator to start to crunch these. This would be negative 5 times 24. So negative 120. Uh, if I add 91 to it, I'm going to be at negative 29. Let's do negative 5 times negative oops, 29. 145. This would be positive 6, negative 30, 0. Okay, that checks. All right, so I've gone through one iteration of synthetic division. Let's go through the next one. I'm gonna do negative two, and I'm gonna plug it into whatever my remainder was here. So there we go. And again, I should get zero. So one, negative two, negative eight, 16, 20, negative 40, negative 16, positive 32, positive three, negative six, zero. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm gonna move over here. All right, and let's do my next zero at one, but again, I wanna do it off of the remainder. So one, negative eight, 20, negative 16, and three. And I should get zero. Okay, so here we go. One, negative seven, negative seven, 13, 13, negative three, negative three, zero. Okay, we're getting close. Here's my last one, at least the last one I could find from my graphing calculator. So we'll put three here, and then I'm gonna do one, negative seven, 13, negative three. And I better get zero. So we've got one, three, negative four, negative 12, one, three, zero. Okay, here we go. So from all of that, let's see what my, my factors are at this point. So I have f of x should be equal to, all right, if negative five is a zero, x plus five is a factor. If negative two is a zero, x plus two is a factor. I've got one here, so x minus one. I've got three here, so x minus three. Now if I look at how many, or look at my starting point, x to the sixth, then I took out one, two, three, four x's, like four powers on x. This has got to start with x squared minus 4x plus 1. And if I want zeros, I still want to see where each of these zeros out. So I know three or four of the zeros, right? These four that I found from my graph and calculator, but now I've got to break this bad boy down. And I can't factor it, but I sure can use the quadratic formula. All right, so can't factor. All right, so let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula. All right, so with that, I'm gonna scooch my paper up. And here we go. All right, so I will have x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two a. So we are looking at four plus or minus, all right, that's 16 minus four. So that would be the square root of 12 over two. Um, let's see, 12 has got a four in it. So I can make this four plus or minus two root three over two. And then again, gotta do bunny ears. Four divided by two is two, two root three over 
2 is root 3, so there are my other two zeros. So at this point, I have my six zeros. I have negative 5, 2, 1, 3, and then we had 2 plus root 3 and 2 minus root 3. And if I wanted to write these up as x-intercepts, and especially as we're about to head into the next section where we start graphing rational functions, I really want us writing things up as x-intercepts. So I have negative 5, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, uh, 2 plus root 3, comma, 0, and then last but not least, 2 minus root 3, comma, 0. Now, with all that being said, I want to go back into my calculator and just check these numbers. So I'm going to go back to my graph screen. There were those two zeros I couldn't figure out. I have a feeling this one here is 2 minus root 3, and I bet this one here is 2 plus root 3. So let me try it. Let me plug in a value. Let's do 2 minus the square root of 3. And when I plug that in, yep, I get my zero back out. And if I want the decimal approximation, it's 0.268. And I knew it was somewhere between zero and one. Just like for this one, I know it's somewhere between three and four. So let's see what two plus root three would give me. Two plus the square root of three. When I hit enter, yep, there it is. This is actually the number zero, because again, this is scientific notation on your calculator. So this is saying it's the number negative 0.0000000008, which is basically zero. And there's my, my zero, two plus root three, or as a decimal, it's 3.73. And I knew it was somewhere between three and four. All right, so that's a lot, right? Trying to factor these, it takes a while, but I did find all six of my zeros. They, none of them had multiplicities more than one. And that's because each factor showed up exactly once, although these ones are a little hidden in this quadratic factor. All right, so with that, let's think back to what we've done in this section, right? We've talked about using synthetic division to factor polynomials. We know how to generate a list of possible rational zeros, keeping in mind that we're going to get in the habit of using technology to help us spot some zeros before we exhaust that list of possible rational zeros. And then we should just be able to find zeros of a polynomial. If I give you a polynomial, you're gonna be able to, you, you need to be able to find those zeros. Because as we get to the next section, we're gonna look at rational functions. And I've said this a few times, but it's always worth repeating. When we talk about rational functions, it's ratios of polynomials. And I'm gonna need you to know how to zero out, find the zeros of the numerator and find the zeros of the denominator, because we're gonna pick up different traits based on whether the numerator zeroes out, the denominator zeroes out, or potentially both of them zero out at the same time. All right, so with that, we're gonna flip on over, or head over to 5.6, it's a long one. All right, this is graphing these rational functions, and these can be pretty tricky. All right, so I will see you in a little bit, gang. Thanks so much, bye.